This lecture is part of Berkeley Math 115, an introductory undergraduate course on the theory of numbers, and it will be about the proof of Dirichlet's theorem, um, about the fact that there are infinitely many primes in arithmetic progressions. So I'll start by quickly recalling um, what we said last lecture about Dirichlet characters. So you recall we had these Dirichlet characters, and the Dirichlet characters had period capital N, so chi of n plus capital N is equal to chi of n, and chi of m times n is equal to chi of m times chi of n, so it's multiplicative, and chi of n was equal to zero if n and capital N are co-prime, so we normally ignore its, its values when whenever n and n are co not co-prime. And to this Dirichlet character, you remember we associate the L series L chi of s, which is chi 1 over 1 to the s plus chi 2 over 2 to the s, and so on. And this had a nice Euler product. This is the product over all primes of 1 over 1 minus chi of p times p to the minus s. And the reason it has this Euler product is um, this follows from the fact that chi is multiplicative. So, so um, that's where we get the Euler product from. Um, and we're going to be using not so much this L series as its logarithm. So we take the logarithm of L chi of S. And now we can write this as a sum over all P and N of um, chi of P to the N over N times P to the N S. And the reason for this is that we can write the logarithm of 1 over 1 minus X um, as being x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 and so on, the usual power series for, for logarithms. Um, and now um, what we're going to show is that if L chi of 1 is non-zero for all chi, all, all characters that, 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 that have period n, except or the special character chi zero with chi zero of n equals one um, whenever n is co-prime to big N. Then Dirichlet's theorem holds there are infinitely many primes congruent to B modulo n, provided B and n are co-prime, of course. Otherwise, they obviously can't have infinitely many primes like that. Um, and the key point is that if L of chi of 1 is non-zero, then logarithm of L chi of 1 is finite. And it, it's really logarithm of the L series that we're interested in, not the L series itself. So um, the reason um, number theorists are so interested in Dirichlet series being non-zero at certain points is, is they're usually interested in the logarithm of the Dirichlet series being finite and not having some sort of singularity at that point. So we'll see how this works in a moment. Um, now in order to illustrate the proof, um, I think it's best to go through a couple of examples in detail. So let's first look at what is possibly the simplest non-trivial example. Let's take n equals 4. And here we have two Dirichlet characters, which I'm going to call chi 0 and chi 1. And the values are as follows. Um, first of all, chi 0 is the boring one that's just 1 everywhere, except when it's 0. So it's 0 for even numbers and 1 for odd numbers. And chi 1 is a little bit more adventurous. So um, it oscillates between 1 and minus 1. So it's 1 for things that are 1 mod 4 and minus 1 for things that are 3 mod 4. And then we've got, um, uh, th then we work out the logarithms of L uh, uh, of the L series. So, so L chi zero of S is one over one to the S minus one plus one over three to the S plus one over five to the S and so on. L chi one of S is one over one to the S minus one over three to the S plus one over five to the S and so on. Now let's look at their logarithms. The logarithm of L chi zero of S is going to be sum over all p and n of chi zero of p to the n over n times p to the n s, which is going to be 1 over 3 to the s plus 1 over 5 to the s plus 1 over 7 to the s. And now these are not 
the, the numbers three, five, and seven are not odd numbers. That that you should think of them as being prime powers. So we get a plus one over two times nine to the s. Then we get one over eleven to the s and one over thirteen to the s. And then we miss out one over fifteen to the s because it's is it, it, fifteen is not a prime power. And log of l of chi one of s is kind of similar. So it's sum of p n of chi one of p to the n over n times p to the n s, which is minus 1 over 3 to the s, plus 1 over 5 to the s, minus 1 over 7 to the s, plus 1 over 2 times 9 to the s, and so on. So it's it's like the first L series, except we put minus signs whenever the prime power is 3 modulo 4. No, notice the prime here is 3, which is 3 modulo 4, but its, it's square is 1 modulo 4, so we get a plus sign there. And the key point is that um, this the, the first one is infinite at s equals one, and that follows because it's um, because um, l chi zero is more or less the Riemann zeta function up to this factor of one minus two to the minus s uh, one, and um, so its logarithm is infinite, and its logarithm is just this series at s equals one. On the other hand, this is finite at s equals one. Um, and um, uh, so, so you can see that um, the um, series of um, just involving primes is going to be finite because L chi of 1, L chi 1 of 1 is 1 minus a third plus a fifth minus a seventh and so on, which is non-zero. Um, that's obvious because the first two terms is positive and the next two terms has positive sum and so on. So, so this means the logarithm of L chi 1 of 1 must be the logarithm of something that's non-zero, which is finite. So the problem is if L chi of 1 was 0, its logarithm would be infinite. And as we'll see in a moment, we really need this logarithm to be, to be finite. Um, of course, we can work out this series explicitly, as Leibniz showed it's pi over 4, but we, we don't actually need that explicit formula. Um, so now let's look at the series log of L chi 0 of S plus log of L chi 1 of S. So the first one is infinite at S equals 1, and this is finite at s equals 1. So if we have something infinite and add a finite correction, the result is still infinite. So this is infinite at s equals 1. And if we work out this sum, it's just the sum over all p to the n that are congruent to 1 mod 4 of 2 over p to the n times n. And we can see this if we look at the if we look at the two series, you see, if we add them up, the 1 over 3 to the s's are going to cancel out. The 1 over 5 to the s's will combine and we'll get two of them. The 1 over 7 to the s's cancel out and so on. So, so things cancel out whenever p to the n is 3 modulo 4. So we get this series here, which looks like 2 over 5 to the s plus 2 over 2 times 9 to the s plus 2 over 13 to the s plus 2 over 17 to the s and so on. Um, we don't get a 2 over 21 to the s. Um, and then we get a 2 over 25 to the s because times 2 because 25 is 5 squared and so on. And we know this sum here is infinite. Um, and since it's a sum over prime powers that are 1 mod 4, this implies there are infinitely many prime powers that are congruent to 1 mod 4. Otherwise, the sum would obviously be finite because it would only have a finite number of terms. Well, that's not quite good enough. Um, we want to show not that there are infinitely many prime powers that are 1 mod 4. We want to show there are infinitely many primes that are 1 mod 4. And so what we're going to do is to show that the correction from prime powers is actually finite. So we want to show... So we need to show that the sum over all primes and sum over all n greater than or equal to 2 of 1 over um, n times p to the n is finite. So here we're, we're missing out the, the, the prime powers p to the 1, 
um, because actually that sum is infinite and we want to show the you know sums of one over prime squares and one over prime cubes and so on give a finite contribution well this is certainly going to be less than the sum over all primes of sum over n greater than to two of one over p to the n here we, we're just missing out the n from the denominator and now um this is a nice this bit here is a nice geometric series so we get a sum over all primes of the sum of this geometric series which is 1 over p squared times 1 over 1 minus 1 over p as you can see you know 1 over 1 plus 1 over p plus 1 over p squared and so on is just 1 over 1 minus 1 over p um, and this is equal to the sum over all primes of 1 over p times p minus 1 and now this is less than or equal to the sum over all integers m greater than or equal to 2 of 1 over m times m minus 1 because um, you know the sum of something over all integers is going to be bigger than the sum of something over all primes and now we can write this as sum over all m greater than or equal to 2 well this is just 1 over m minus 1 minus 1 over m as you can see so this sum becomes um, 1 minus a half plus a half minus a third that's a third minus a quarter and so on. And now you can see everything is cancelling out. The two halves cancel out, the two thirds cancel out and so on. So, so this sum is just one. And we notice that one is less than infinity. So we've managed to prove that our original sum over all primes, over all prime powers is indeed only finite. So, so now we can complete the proof. We know that the sum over all p to the n that are congruent to 1 mod 4 of 1 over n p to the n is equal to infinity. We know the sum over all p to the n congruent to 1 mod 4 with n greater than or equal to 2 of 1 over n p to the n is less than infinity. So the sum over all p congruent to 1 mod 4 of 1 over p must be equal to infinity. So the number of primes p congruent to 1 mod 4 is infinite because the sum of their reciprocals is infinite. In fact, we've proved something stronger than the fact there are infinitely many primes that are 1 mod 4. We've actually shown the sum of their reciprocals is also infinite. Well, what about p is 3 mod 4? Well, this is a very simple variation of the proof. What we do is we look at log of L chi 0 of s minus log of l chi 1 of s and now we notice the first term is infinite just as before and the second term is finite just as before so this is finite and now if we work out what this is it's now the sum over all p to the n congruent to 3 modulo 4 of 2 over p to the n times n and this follows because if we look at the series for these two L series you see now, um, if we take this series minus this series, the 1 over 3 to the S's are going to give you 2 over 3 to the S and the 1 over 5 to the S's are now going to cancel instead of reinforcing each other and the 1 over 7 to the S's will add up. So, so whenever a prime power is 3 mod 4, um, it now appears in, in this sum. So, so this sum is infinite because it's the sum of something that's infinite plus the sum of something that's finite. And just as before, the, 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 the sum over p to the n with n greater than or equal to 2 is finite. So the sum over all p congruent to 3 mod, mod, mod 4 of 1 over p is now infinite. So just as before, if the sum of the reciprocals of all primes that are 3 mod 4 is infinite, the number of primes that are 3 mod 4 must also be infinite. So now let's do a slightly more complicated case. Let's show there are infinitely many primes congruent to 3 modulo 10. So what we do is we write down the characters, and the characters are only none, 0, for 1, 3, 7, or 9 modulo 10. And we get four characters. We can have 1, 1, 1, 1, or 1, i, minus i, minus 1, or 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1, or 1, minus i, i, minus 1. Let's call these chi 0, chi 1, chi 2, and chi 3. 
Um, and now what we want to do is to find a linear combination of chi 0, chi 1, chi 2 and chi 3 that's 1 for on 3 and 0 on everything else. And it's not difficult to see how to do this. We can just take chi 0 minus i chi 1 minus chi 2 plus i chi 3. And this is 0 here. It's 4 here. It's 0 here and it's 0 here. And the 4 comes because it's... Um, it's, it's Euler's function applied to 10. It's the number of characters. Um, you notice the, 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 these coefficients here are just um, chi 1 of 3 to the minus 1, and this coefficient is chi 2 of 3 to the minus 1, and so on. This is chi 3 of 3 inverse. And we can see that this linear combination of characters vanishes except on 3 by using the orthogonality relations for characters. Um, you remember the characters had this nice orthogonality relation, these nice orthogonality relations, which um, shows that this linear combination will have the properties we want. Well, now that we've found this linear combination of characters, what we do is we take the corresponding linear combination of L series. So, so we've got the combination of characters chi 0 minus i chi 1 minus um, chi 2 plus i chi 3. So we take logarithm of L chi 0 of s minus i times the logarithm of L chi 1 of s minus the logarithm of L chi 2 of s plus i times the logarithm of L chi 3 of s. So we've taken the same linear combination of logarithms of L series that we took of characters. And this will be some this will become sum over p to the n of 1 over p to the n times n times um, chi 0 of n minus i chi 1 of n minus chi 2 of n plus i chi 3 of n. And this will just be the sum over all p to the n congruent to 3 mod 10 of 1 over n times p to the n. Uh, except we should put in a factor of 4, which is d d d d d just this number 5 of 10. So um, now we notice that this term here is um, infinite and logar logarithm of chi 1 of s is finite and the other two are also finite, logarithm of chi 2 of 1 and logarithm of chi 3 of 1. So these are all finite at s equals 1. And the reason for this is that L chi 1 of 1 is non-zero and L chi 2 of 1 is non-zero and finite and L chi 3 of 1 is non-zero and finite. So, so we should really check that these are all non-zero and we, we sort of checked this earlier. In each of these cases it's, it's quite easy. For instance, to show L chi 2 of 1 is non-zero, we have it's 1 over 1 to the s minus 1 over 3 to the s minus 1 over 7 to the s plus 1 over 9 to the s plus 1 over 11 to the s and so on. And if you take the first two terms that's positive and the sum of the next two terms is negative but smaller than the first two terms and the sum of the next two terms is positive but less than the, 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 the sum of the third and fourth terms. So if we take these terms in pairs, we get an alternating series whose terms are decreasing in absolute value. We get something minus something a bit smaller plus something smaller still. And you can easily see that that must actually be positive. And the, the other two cases are equally easy. So what we have found is that the sum over all p to the n congruent to 3 modulo 10 of 5 of 10 divided by n times p to the n is infinite and we know the sum over all p to the n congruent to 3 mod 10 with n greater than or equal to 2 of 5 10 over n times p to the n is finite for exactly the same reasons as for n equals 4 the, 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 the sum over all squares and cubes and so on is, 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 is finite so the sum over all primes congruent to 3 modulo 10 of 1 over p is infinite. And of course, if the sum of the reciprocals of all primes that are 3 mod 10 is infinite, this implies there are infinitely many primes 
that are congruent to 3 modulo 10. Um, well, now that we've done the uh, case n equals 10, it should be fairly obvious what the general case looks like. So the general case, we just sort of copy it. We, we write down all the characters. So we've got a, um, um, we can take these numbers 1, 2, whatever, mod n, and we've got various characters. We've got a character chi 0, which takes values 1 everywhere, except for numbers that are, have a factor in common with n. Then we've got characters chi 1, chi 2, and so on, which take some values that we don't really know about. We, we have a big table of them. And now we want to find a number that's, we want to find a linear combination of characters that's 1 if n is congruent to some value b mod n and naught otherwise. And to do this, we take the following linear combination of characters. We take chi 0 of b times chi 0 of n plus chi 1 of b inverse times chi 1 of n plus chi 2 of b inverse times chi 2 of n and so on. And we find that this is equal to phi of n whenever n is congruent to b modulo big N and zero if N is not congruent to B. Um, so we get phi of N because um, if N is congruent to B, all these terms in the sum are one and there are phi of N of them. And otherwise the orthogonality relations show that we get zero. Actually, we, we don't actually need to write this expression down explicitly. We could just use the fact that the um, characters span the vector space of all functions, as we proved last time. And that shows there must be some linear combination which which vanishes except for b modulo n, and which is all we need. And we, we, we also need to know that the coefficient of the principal character chi of 0 is, is non-zero, but that's kind of obvious because all the other characters have average value 0, and the function that's 1 for n equals b and 0 elsewhere doesn't have average value 0, so it must involve chi of 0. And now we take the same linear combination of L series. So we take chi 0 of B times L chi 0 of S. Except we take the logarithm of this plus chi um, 1 of B times the logarithm of L chi 1 of S and so on. And if we work out this sum, we get, as usual, this turns out to be the sum over P to the N is congruent to B modulo N of phi of n over n times p to the n. And as before, the terms with n greater than 1 um, add up to something finite. We can ignore squares and cubes and so on of primes. And now let's look at these terms. So L chi of 0 is infinite, and L chi of 1 is going to be finite, and L chi of 2 is finite, and so on. Um, so, um, this term sum is infinite, and the terms of the n greater than, greater than 1 are finite, so the sum over p is congruent to b mod n of phi of n over p must be infinite. And this implies there are infinitely many primes that are congruent to b modulo n. Well, there's one slight little problem we haven't dealt with. Here we were assuming that the logarithm of L chi 1 of S and L chi 2 of S and so on are finite. So we assume, we assumed that logarithm of L chi i of S is finite, i non-zero. In other words, we want to know that L chi i of S is um, not equal to 0 at s equals 1. So I should have said we are taking s equals 1 here, of course. Um, so that's what we're going to prove next lecture. We want to show that L, that, 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 that the um, Dirichlet L series of characters don't vanish at s equals 1, and this will complete the proof of Dirichlet's theorem.